One of the side effects of the stimulants could be lack of sleep, and maybe they don't gain weight as well. Is that true? Yes, and in children that are very small, that can be an issue. In bigger kids, it's not usually a major problem. There seems to be a phenomenon going on in colleges. A lot of kids who are normal are trying to take these kind of medicines. Is that somewhat of a danger? Sure, uh, and sometimes kids in college will take lots of it. Uh, they'll take it to stay up to study. Uh, they may even take it recreationally. If you take, uh, you know, 100 of these pills and uh, squeeze them down and take it all at once. So there is a real risk for abuse of these medications, some more than others. The major risk is if you take a lot of this stuff, it can have uh, cardiovascular effects, meaning it can increase heart rate and blood pressure, which uh, can be bad for you. If a kid had an underlying cardiac problem, undiagnosed, is there any risk of taking these medicines? Uh, there's probably, taking it properly, there's probably very, very, very little risk. There is some data that even taking a regular dose may increase your blood pressure just a little bit. Uh, there's really right now no clear data that giving this to a large population that it increases uh, a risk in any individual patient. I think it's more of a theoretical risk. So if a child does have a heart problem that we know of, we certainly would have that patient cleared before giving these medications. Well, several months ago, there was some report of 25 kids allegedly died taking uh, a stimulant. You, you feel this is just happens to be 25 kids that died and happened to be on the medicine, or is it there is a risk for that? Well, I think every medicine. I, I, I think every medicine has every risk known in the, in the world, and we know that people can die from Tylenol and Motrin and everything else, including Benadryl, but it's very rare. Uh, the risks, the actual death rates from these medications that I've seen are no worse than people not on the medications. Uh, there was one of the medications, specifically Adderall, was actually banned in Canada for a short period of time uh, because they had a few children that died, but when they looked at the data, uh, as far as could be determined, uh, the risk of death in children on Adderall was not higher than the risk of death in children not on medication. Is there any medicine that doesn't stimulate the body and controls kids who have this? Yes, medicine? there are several. Uh, these are what I term second-line medications. Uh, the best studied, honestly, is, uh, well, there are probably two best studied, uh, is clonidine or catapress, which is an old blood pressure drug. But that actually was studied for safety and, and, and for effectiveness with uh, Ritalin. Uh, in, an, in, a, in a study by, sponsored by the NIH about five years ago and was found to be safe for the heart and blood pressure with Ritalin and without Ritalin and also did work. Uh, so this is a second-line drug that I sometimes give as a patch. Uh, other second-line medications are Stratera, which is related a little bit to an antidepressant. Uh, Stratera came out about four years ago. Uh, but, the, you know, these, this medication has certain advantages in certain subgroups and certain disadvantages in others. And sometimes people have used other medications, including Wellbutrin, which some of you may know is a medication that's used to stop smoking in adults. Um, and this, uh, there have been some data that this can be helpful. But the best studied second-line drugs really are clonidine or catapress and Stratera, the, the, the newer medication that was developed just for ADHD. So in other words, it's a problem that can be controlled somewhat with medicine. The rough failures, obviously. And any doctor who gives the medicine has to monitor it very, very carefully. Is that true? That's correct. And the furthermore is one shouldn't be rushing to give medicine in any child. And I think, uh, I think one warning for a parent is uh, that if you go to the doctor and they want to give medicine on the first visit, that should be a warning sign. Now, there are some children that actually do need it on the first visit. Uh, they're getting thrown out of first grade because they're off, off the banisters and running around. But for most children, it shouldn't be something that should be given without going through the scales and discussing risk factors and side effects. And I think most uh, careful neurologists or psychiatrists will not rush into giving stimulants on the first visit unless it's already been worked up in great detail. So in other words, there's no side effect to any drug we don't prescribe. That's correct. And all drugs have every known side effect and that's always the risk. But these drugs in general are very safe, but should only be given if one is relatively sure a child has ADHD first, and secondly, if one is relatively sure that that child is falling behind in a way that's affecting their academic or social 
or their frustration threshold, which is actually a, a major issue because once a child falls behind because of ADHD, they become quite frustrated and uh, can get depressed secondarily to it. So a doctor should discuss the risk and benefit from all medication use. That's correct. And, and I think that, that any parent should really be wary if any doctor, if a patient walks in and a doctor wants to give you Ritalin, for example, on the first visit uh, without doing scales and without going over the risks and maybe seeing a patient probably twice before starting it. Thank you. One more.